In the mid-60s and early 70s, the Oak Ridge Boys topped the charts in gospel music. With seven Dove Awards to their credit, the Oaks filled auditoriums throughout America and abroad with the sweet, uplifting sounds of Christian music. Willie Wynn was their gifted tenor, and he had come a long way from the cotton and tobacco fields of southern Georgia. I grew up in a shotgun house out in the country, and uh, in the heyday, I, I lived in, in the Nashville area, and I had a tri-level home, and uh, when I wanted a Cadillac, I went and bought it. And uh, when I wanted to go on a cruise, I went on a cruise. Um, it took a lot, a lot of hard work and a lot of paying dues, they call it in the business. But even at that, I never really, never lost a sign of where I came from. 16 years of discipline, professionalism, and rigorous work schedules brought the Oak Ridge Boys Quartet widespread recognition in households throughout the United States. However, Willie's home was suffering. He was in his second marriage, and it was dying. It takes an extremely special kind of wife to uh, keep your life pretty happy if you're in the entertainment world, especially as hard as we work, because a lot of times we work 250 or more days a year. And then uh, when we did come home, it was practiced that everybody hit that office doing something to enhance that, that group, to help that group grow. Uh, and that's not necessarily fair to the home front, but that's the way it was. Willie gave up his spot in the Oaks, hoping he would save his marriage. Yet sadly, it was too late. Within what seemed like a twinkling of an eye, Willie had lost his family and his fame. I gave up something that I really, it was a part of me. And then the reasons that I gave it up they vanished also, so I was kind of in no man's land, you know, and I really went down. Times only got tougher for Willie. A succession of unwise business decisions, untrustworthy partners, and bad luck eroded Willie's confidence in himself, in his relationships, and worst of all, in God. Unfortunately, I think I lost the ability to believe in I was on the bottom of the world with no light at the end of the tunnel. Financially, I didn't even have a job. And it seems that I had programmed myself to failure and had learned to believe in failure, which is bad. In the midst of Willie's dark times, a friend of his gave him a tape by Pastor. He put it in his pocket and carried it from city to city with him for the next five years, but he never listened to it. Yet one day, when Willie was so far down that all hope was gone, he played the cassette for the first time, and the words he heard birthed the miracle. It was talking about success. You can do it. And I really started listening to it. Listened to it all the way through. And still don't know why, but I went next to where I crossed the street uh, to my niece's. I think she maybe had gone to the store or something. So I turned on her, her television, saying exactly the same things that his tape had told her, that you can make it, you know, you can succeed. And, and uh, I locked into that like a chicken on a gym rope. That day, Willie rededicated his life to God, and he decided to rebuild his life with Jesus as his foundation. It was as if that day, around, turning around, and uh, that, you know, of course you can't do it by yourself, you know, you got to have God, but you've got to believe in Him, and you've got to believe in yourself too, those two ingredients will make it work. Willie's life has been revived supernaturally, he is now an award-winning insurance salesman, has a healthy, happy marriage, and is a tenor in an up-and-coming gospel group called Destiny. Jesus has been all the good parts. Uh, because I've tried it without him. Uh, it's dead end street, won't work. Uh, and I changed it and turned it around, and as you can see, things have become quite different, much more favorable. Uh, and it's because of him. Reporting for Success in Life, from Daytona Beach, Florida, this is Jeff Jones.